Hello and welcome to Cycling Weekly's Tech of the Month and we're into February. Happy Valentine's Day coming up. I wouldn't say it came around quickly, but honestly, January was the slowest month ever. It always is a very bad month for everyone. We had been on a few launches. Yeah, already. Year, and there's some exciting stuff to be announced and coming out, um, all to be revealed on Cycling Weekly's YouTube channel. But for now, we've got some product that you guys have been riding and testing. Mm -hmm. What do we got? Roofs. I've brought some shoes. Ah, uh, yeah. But these are Le Col's first ever uh, escapade into the shoe market, shall we say. So Le Col have launched these new shoes, the Le Col Pro Carbon Shoe. They look very snazzy. Uh, they are. They do look very snazzy. I've managed Shiny, to keep them patent blindingly white. white. Yeah, it's because I've been wearing overshoes everywhere because the weather's been pretty bad. So they're really comfortable. They're made up of this PU leather, so it's kind of like artificial leather, which is actually really, really supple. It moves really nicely around the foot. So when you have them on, you, uh, you have a really comfortable fit, especially around the top of the foot, mm -hmm. down the sides. Um, and they've got this unidirectional carbon sole, which is pretty stiff. And Has it got an index rating? Stiff it doesn't index. have an index we rating, index actually. Ratings. We need... Uh, yeah, we need the, non, the no context index <laughs> rating. <laughs> I reckon this is about a 64. Oh, nice. Oh, break your foot off. Yeah, you but they do a 65 it. though, don't they? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. for the real pros. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, no stiffness index, but it is pretty stiff. I've not noticed any flex, but then I'm not exactly James Bracey when I'm but stamping you, on the pedals. You're not exactly. a big fan of super stiff, fully race dedicated shoe, are you? No. But you've got on with these? I've got on with these, yeah. If something's too stiff, it just sends my feet to sleep. And especially my right foot, I have a real problem with that foot. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't know why. So I like something with a bit of, not give, I don't like to feel it flexing, but probably not like a top end sole. It's a bit too much for me. And these have been okay, actually. Um, and I've used them both riding around on the roads and on the turbo as well, even doing some sessions. Oh, yeah. New Year, New You. New Year, New Me. And I've not noticed any flex when I've been doing the Zwift, which has been nice. Um, but I would say I'd probably go a size up. Okay, so you're yeah. a 43. So these are a 43, which is the size of my shoe. These are 43s, but often in cycling shoes, I find I have to size up. And I think that that would be the case with these. They don't do a half size, unfortunately. That would be perfect. And actually, they only do three sizes. Ah. Yeah, so 43, 44, and 45. So if you're not one of those three sizes, you can't well, get James, these Well, let me tell Ooh. you why. They're only made 500 of these. Wow. So they are seriously limited edition um, for £250. Actually, for a limited run of 500 yeah. shoes, that is... You would expect something a lot good. more expensive than that, especially because the top-end shoes of Specialized and Giro top out at close to like £330, yeah. yeah. yeah up to 350 so 250 doesn't seem crazy expensive. No. And it's got is, all the same features as those shoes really, isn't it? You know, full yeah. carbon, it's lightweight, you've got BOA style dials. BOA style, yeah. BOA style, yeah. it's an Boa important is point a here. It's yeah. uh, at top. Yeah. And I wanted to, to say something here, so I've not really got on with a top dials no. in the past. Um, Bonts used to use them all the time before they moved to their rival uh, Boa, mm -hmm. uh, and I had cable snapping, I had mm. ratchets going. Um, so it'll be interesting to see after some time that you've had the shoes, if they've improved the durability of that. But the ratchet system's a bit strange. You don't get that, yeah. you know, minimal, you know, backwards. It's quite a big amount, it pulls each yeah, time so, as well, so, isn't so, it? Yeah, yeah. You, you can tighten them up all the way, keep going, like little increments. And then when you want to go backwards, it's just one click and then you've and got... It, pulls loose. Got the whole thing coming loose. Yeah, so. that's been my real, my one real issue, I think, with these shoes, because I'm the type of rider who, before he goes out the door, he over tightens them. I always over tighten my shoes. Too eager, like, <laughs> get them done, oh, ready to go. It's not going anywhere. That's why you have problems with your feet, because yeah. <laughs> your toes have gone blue. I've severed all of the veins <laughs> in the top of my feet, because, you know, when you do them initially, they feel really comfortable when they're tight. And then as soon as I've been pedaling for about 10K, I'm like, oh man, I really need to loosen my shoes. But then I loosen it and it just pulls all the way out because there is no incremental 
yeah. like movements backwards. It's, it's interesting because it, I think that's it, it is a luxury being able to mm. sort of minutely adapt things on your shoe. But once you've had a shoe where you can do that and you are riding, and sometimes when I'm climbing, I I need to back the tightness of the shoe yeah. off. But if I, you know, or when I'm descending or need a bit of relief yeah. or whatever, or if I want to go for a sprint, you're like, well, dial those right up, you know, get ready. And, Pro style, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tra training camps early season, you, you can hear the ratchet yeah, going tick, yeah, tick, yeah. tick, and you're just like, what's going on? Who's, <laughs> who's doing what? But you need that adjustment, I think. And yeah. for a premium shoe, that needs to come with it, I think. Yeah, I think so. So that's, that's my one real frustration with these shoes, I think. Um, but they've got lots of vents. They've got these four vents around the front, vents on the bottom as well. Not that I can say I've really noticed any effect because I have obviously been wearing overshoes. Yeah. Um, so they should be okay for the summer, but I'll have to test them in warmer weather. So yeah, the Lacole Pro Carbon Shoes. They're my product this month. I like those. I do, I do like the look of They're those. They're a nice colour, aren't they? You can't beat a pair of white shoes. No. no. And if you're a fan of Lacole and you want something that's, you know, a bit more exclusive because there's only 500 of them, then why not? Absolutely. That's 500 pairs, not 500 shoes, isn't it? 500, 500 pairs of shoes. Yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. a thousand yeah. shoes. Yeah. Yeah. I was fast at that time. Yeah. yeah. Quick maths. Nice. Thanks, Rupert. Good product there. James, what have you got? Well, obviously it's winter, so a bit like last month when I brought a pair of shorts to the mix. Nice. Um, I've brought some sunglasses. Now, no, you say that. Sunglasses yeah. are for all year round. Well, this is what I was going to say. Like today, it's very sunny today yeah. and the sun is very low. Yeah. You need to And it's wet on the ground, so it's like pinging off into yeah. your eyes. Yeah, this is like, this is almost like the perfect time to talk about sunglasses, mm. isn't it? Uh, especially in this case, we've got some big sunglasses, oh. okay? So Smith, uh, the, those guys that bring out the helmets with like the, the straws, like the choroid straws, yep. they've got some new glasses out. So these came out last month, so January. Um, these are called the Wildcats. Oh, yes. Go Wildcats. <laughs> Go Wildcats. And they are big. Oh, man, they're glasses. really nice, though. Check that they out. Are some, they are really good looking glasses. They are. I love them. I yeah. absolutely love them. So basically, these are inspired by Smith goggles. So if you're a mountain biker, uh, this uses a lens very similar in size to some of their goggles. So in terms of coverage, it's massive. Uh, but that's brilliant for this time of year because not only have we got that sort of like that sun coverage, but also we've got the coverage from rain, wind, everything. And it protects your face from the cold, I think, as well. Um, few little facts about them, have a little look. Yeah. Uh, they are made of a very flexible material uh, that's basically the same that as they use in their goggles. See? Oh, they, they look good, you. man. They do they suit, you. suit your football head really well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah. I'll take that. The best thing about them is they cover your face. Well, so what's some, your <laughs> they do look really, they're really good looking. Mm. This like minimal frame design, yeah. but yeah. they've not gone crazy with the colour. I really like it. And they're huge, which means I have a real problem at the moment in that I just can't see in the morning. So my <laughs> eyes have got a lot worse, but I don't wear contact lenses. So what you, you... So I have to wear my glasses when I ride in the morning. Okay. But now, what do you reckon? Oh, hello. Look at that. I think that actually works. Oh, my grand called. She wants her glasses <laughs> back. <laughs> she wishes she looked yeah. this good. <laughs> so these look very similar to other rival glasses, yeah. like... Hundred percent. Oh. And how dare you? And Oakley. Yes, they um, are. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's interesting that the fashion has gone to bigger glasses. I mean, mm, big, um, yeah. so Smith are following that brand, or mm. you know, the guy, the guys are following each other. And it's yeah. but it's interesting that the style of glasses has gone from sort of you know sleek, especially for cycling, uh, and they're kind of almost going slightly more casual with the the way they look. Yeah, they are like retro inspired. They look um, good, mate. They look good. My, I've got a skinny face, so actually really big glasses don't suit me that well. Actually, these are better. They're not that well, wide. Yeah, on That's some brands, thing about I them. can like put my, my finger through the gap between yeah. Yeah. my temples. But what's also really good about these is if you just take them off for seconds, the nose piece, uh, it moves. So you can pop it in and out. So it's got ah, yeah. little adjustments. So you can bring it either closer to your face or away from your face as well to suit different nice. nose styles. So that's a real neat little feature. Um, as I said, really soft 
materials, so grippy. So have you been wearing these when mountain biking? I've been wearing these mountain biking and road cycling How as well. How do they stick to your face? They are really good. Again, they've got that hydrophobic, so similar to pretty much most brands. So it's quite a sticky rubber on here uh, and they do fit really, really well. As I said, and you can shake your head and do whatever. And uh, they, nice they work there, really, really well. It was nice, I like that. It? Just like go for it. <laughs> uh, this is their extra large. So this is like the biggest one they do. And the other good thing about it is it's a replaceable lens. So it's literally just pop off like so. So just like with all of the- Get those lenses uh, nice and grubby. Absolutely. Take it grubby off. And in the Ooh, pack- Great. No, yes. No. Well, funny enough. <laughs> In the back, it two, comes with a clear lens. 2.0. <laughs> I've got clear lenses, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You're sorted. How much do they cost? That's the thing. Um, these are at the top ends. So these are £200. So £199. That pounds, is that is Which top is ends. top end. Yeah. It comes with, as I said, the two lenses and all of the top end technology. So that's the one thing about them. If you don't want to spend that sort of money on these, but you still want to get that same sort of technology, then they've got a couple of other like pairs of glasses uh, like this one here I like these because these are pretty retro as well still big this is the flywheel so the flywheel is a single lens so it's actually fixed in place uh, they've still got the adjustment on the nose so they've still got all the features with the chroma pop as well um, and these are 115 so much yeah, more, more in line they, with they, the come, they come under Oakley for their, their oh, totally. charting tops Absolutely. and 100% as well. Yeah, 100%. Well, this uh, is the thing. is like now, yeah, 100% Oakley, all of those brands, uh, really similar prices in terms of those. But these are, are quite nice, a bit smaller. Boff. Yes. To keep the theme of not talking about anything winter, mm. um, I've got something new from Italian brand Castelli. Uh, I went to see them uh, as they were based in Mallorca with Team Sky. You had a great time, didn't you? Uh, I did. That was just before Christmas. And they showed me some new bits of kit. Exciting. So, without further ado, here they are. They've got a new jersey and shorts, uh, aptly named the Aero Race 6.0 for the jersey. I'll just zip it Trips up here. Trips off the tongue, doesn't it? It does. So that's an update of their Aero range. Yep. Of their 5.0. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the jersey there, which will set you back £110. Let's get that out of the way. Um, and so what they've done, they've done a lot of CFD testing. CFD? With this. Everyone loves CFD. Yeah, what does uh, it mean? Computerised. Computational fluid dynamics. That's, That's the one. one. Yeah, there we go. We've got the nerves with the glasses over there. Oh. Um, they've done a lot of CFD testing, uh, and they found that... Uh, Placing seams, certain materials in certain areas would save you a little bit of efficiency here and there. Okay. So the big claim together is that the jersey and shorts will save you 15 watts. That's quite a That is big, quite substantial, yeah. isn't it? At over, over what? 50k an hour. How much riding at 50k sorry, sorry, an hour yeah, did you do? Say, <laughs> over the winter and <laughs> even in the summer, 50k an hour? That is a fair chat you'd have to be going at. Yeah, so they claim um, up to 15 watts, uh, which is 2.5% 2, 2 over their previous jersey and short right. combination. Yeah. Um, so that was provided to Team Sky in 2018. Mm -hmm. Team Sky again for their final year in the Pro Peloton as in the current guys um, for 2019. Um, so that's at 40K, I think they're saying about three watts. So it's about 1% increase in efficiency. And then when you increase the speed, the faster you go, the more aerodynamics yeah. come into play, the more gains you'll get. But don't be mistaken, these, th these garments and Castelli are really focusing on high-end performance with Team Sky for the pros. And that, that technology is coming right to the consumer. So if you do race around at 50K an hour, then you, know, you could buy these shorts and jerseys. Uh, the shorts are the 4.0. Aero Race 4.0s, um, the fourth major update for the short. Um, there's a few bits I'll get into in a second about these, um, and they will set you back £150. Pounds. Um, and they've changed the leg end. Um, so they've basically, it's a laser edged cut um, bit of lycra, which compresses around the leg and holds in place. But what they've done with the silicone grippers is they made them vert vertical, so it doesn't pull and stretch on the skin. So it holds in place without stretching anything. When I rode them in December a um, couple of months ago, uh, I had very hairy legs, as I still do now in the middle of winter, and even with my hairy, beastie, ape-like legs, um, 
they didn't pull on the hairs or anything like that, but remained in place, which yeah. was quite nice and quite comfortable. And they've reconstructed the rear and the straps, so the straps are really lightweight. They're super um, you they can are, super aren't they? Look skinny, at that. Aren't they? Um, awesome. So highly breathable, and there's more support around the sort of the rear, sort of the upper hips and the sides to keep them in place. I'm glad this is only up here and not on the legs. And, and not on the front. Yeah. The pad is their updated um, Prosciutto 2 pad um, with the Kiss Air insert. So it's actually two bits of um, foam stitched yeah. together internally, um, but there's no seams or stitches on the external side of things. So there's no rough edges or abrasions to affect you as a bike rider. Uh, it's still quite lightweight and thin. Um, when I tested it, I was on a new bike with a saddle I wasn't sure of, um, so I wasn't totally comfortable. So I couldn't say anything against the pad really. Um, but you know, it remained in place and it, it stuck there. So the short, uh, I thought was a very good short. Uh, and the fact that it's giving you gains, they say up to 10 watts faster than the previous short, um, which uh, is... 100 kilometers an hour. <laughs> which, is, which is big, big claims. So when you're doing the study. land speed record, <laughs> yes. do you want to be wearing a pair you've got of your 10 Well, you know game. we're doing those ridiculous rides this year. I'm going to be wearing you're gonna be doing those, aren't you? this kit. So they're the shorts. I won't throw them at you. Uh, and the jersey, 110 pounds for that jersey, 109 grams in weight from my scales at home, uh, 176 grams for the short. So it's a, a lightweight bit of kit. Mm whilst being very aerodynamic. So they've used laser, a laser cut edged um, arms, uh, which are very tight and skin hugging. The jersey itself, um, in a medium, fit me okay. Um, the pockets were impressive actually, because lightweight jerseys, tend, you tend to get a lot of sag in those pockets yeah. because there's, the material just stretches and can't hold anything. Because the, the um, pros aren't really ever gonna put anything in them. No, the not at all. Um, but when I was in Mallorca, you know, it was obviously very cold early morning, so you had gilets and leg warmers and various things on. And then tucking all of that in with your food and your phone and your wallet, it, it didn't bulge down and fall behind. So they've done a really good job with the material at the back. There you go, Castelli and the new kit launched uh, in January last month. Very nice. Yeah. Is that a B-twin? Is it? Was it? What is it? <laughs> so, they've it's not a B-twin. They've spelled, they've spelled it wrong. What's going on here? It is not a B-twin bike. It is what a B-twin once was. Is. So it's now called Tribun. So B-twin decided to split their range into two. They had what was called Triban, which we have here, which is comfort focused and endurance based. And what has been released recently was Van Riesel, which is the performance side. So you remember the ultra frames mm -hmm. that they yeah. did in aluminium and carbon? We had one on Tech of the Months, actually. Yeah. That's now Van Riesel. Van Riesel. So the important thing being, bring this back round, that it's not Beethoven anymore. Okay. It's now Triban and it's now Van Riesel. Both okay. are still available in Decathlon. Uh, and at the moment, in any decathlon you go into, you will find this bike. So this is the Triban RC520. And you say it's their endurance-based It is range. an endurance bike slash do-it-all, you know, fully versatile bike. So it's an aluminium frame, partnered with a half-carbon fork with an aluminium steerer. Yep. And uh, it's, it's pretty much equipped to take on anything. So you can see that it's got rack mounts, it's got a oh lot of God. clearance. Uh, it's got a pan. You can put a pannier mount on the back, so you can take it bike packing. And yes, you've spotted them, James. Mm. This is really interesting. So, uh, Tribun or Decathlon, I'll say, have been pushing to start producing more and more of their own kit. So this bike actually features Tribun tubeless wheels, wow. which they've made themselves, and their own tubeless tires. 28 millimeter tires, you Resist, can see there. Resist, protect. Yeah, so you can set this up tubeless as well, which is seriously like versatile. Big time. Yeah. But the fact that they do it all themselves, yeah. which I'm sure helps with costing. I'm right? sure it does, it yeah. Down, doesn't and it? Yeah. it will bring the price down. So this costs 725 pounds. Wow. Which is a Shimano 105 group set. Yeah. Well. Minus the chain set. Minus yeah. the chain set. Yeah, and, yeah. but um, it's still a Shimano chain set. It's, it's still a it's Shimano just, chain yeah. set, yeah. Um, it's not Shimano brakes. It's TRP brakes, and they're a cable slash hydro uh, mix, but they work very well. Which is better than straight cable, cable. action disc brakes yeah. because they're horrible. Yeah, and most impressively, and which is this is awesome, is because it's 105, it's got the really small hoods because they updated it. 
So not too long ago, you'd have seen a bike like this with enormous, massive. massive hoods, and you, it, which are very comfortable. They were I'm very comfortable. This out. They are very comfortable, but like, just God, they were ugly. Yeah. 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 Uh, but these look great now. Yeah, they that do. It's a seriously, it's like a nice looking bike. Yeah, it for is. For what it does as well. The drop stays. It's very obviously very on trend and makes it comfortable as well. So what the brand is doing is it's going through quite a major state of change because it realized that it was selling so many bikes and they were selling so well mm. because B-Twin is enormously popular yeah. and we've reviewed it very well yeah. all the time that they needed to make it more manageable and split it into endurance and leisure and casual cycling, which is this, and performance cycling, which is the ultra ranges, which does make sense, but it just needs to be ironed out a bit because at the moment it's a bit confusing what's what. Well, it's confusing, isn't it? Because they've got Triban already. Yes. So it's yeah. kind of like... Because there was a B-Twin Triban tri bike, yeah. which did, it did fit the into that leisure yeah. category yeah. as well. Yeah. So there are two models of this. There's actually a model below this one as well. Okay. So this is the highest, currently the highest M1, but I think they are planning to introduce one more higher than it. Okay. Cool. But that's not been revealed yet. And they've just launched the Van Riesel side of things, so the performance thing, still based around those ultra frame sets. And they've even teased an aero bike. Wow. Which could be coming in 2020, they say. Wow. Okay. So that's, it's a, just a big thing for them, isn't it? It's, yeah. a, it's a big ask, and they've really made it hard for themselves, I think. Yes. With the change. I'm, sure in a, no, I'm sure in a couple of years that it would all work out, and you know, they'll have Triban, and they'll have Van Riesel, and it would is very defined and they know what they're doing with it. And I can understand that B-Twin became such a massive thing that they needed to divide that up. Yeah. But, and I spoke to Decathlon um, later last year, and I said that was, that was a big thing. And they, they did give me a long, lengthy mm -hmm. answer to why they've done it. And I can see why they've done it. Mm -hmm. But it's hard, it's hard to go from something really successful and everyone knows it and they understand it and they get what it is to then rebrand. That, that is a big task. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm just saying it's a big task. Because B-Twin was awesome. becoming a household name. Yeah, B-Twin you know, was, was cycling. Yeah, it was you know, known, yeah. hugely popular, incredibly well-reviewed bikes. Yeah. So it is hard to move away from that brand name. But ultimately, the same ethic and like work is still being put into these Definitely. new bikes yeah so yeah. they are and the fact that they good. now added their own which is amazing as well yeah like would just would just help that brand fly super interesting that they've got their own tubeless tires um and what's great about a bike like this is it falls into that like cycle to work scheme price point yep. as well and this could be perfect for commuting around a town yep. and that's really what they had in mind they wanted a bike that people would ride to work and then a bike that on the weekends they'd want to ride it a little bit further yeah. and this is it perfectly really yeah. 10.4 kilos. Ouch. Yeah, it's heavy, but this bike isn't meant to be super fast, super sporty it's performance. It's going to be stable. It's going to be stable. Yeah. It's, it's going to be planted. Descend like a stone. <laughs> um, but you've but got, you've got compact, disc brakes. Yeah, and compact it train set. Compact. It's wide, a big cassette. Wide cassette. Yeah. You can fit a wider cassette as well because you've got a long, long yeah. cage rear mech on there. So you can actually do what you want, really. For what it does, it's perfectly suited, and I don't think the weight takes away from that very much. No, no. no. We loved B-Twin, and I'm sure we're going to love Triburn, and it looks nice like they're doing a good job. Yeah, having it like the blue on blue, so it's not like everything's in your face as to what bike it is and everything. Yeah, it's, so. quite, it's quite smart, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's interesting. It's a really interesting time for the brand. It is. And I'm very excited to see what they're going to bring out next. But that's it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> that is Tech of the Month and bike of the month for February. I um, hope you've enjoyed this. Please do like and subscribe our YouTube channel. But until next time, we'll see you then. The pad is updated. It is their prosciutto. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's their prosciutto. Their prosciutto. Um, it, it's two. had Simon's prosciutto on it. <laughs> it has, actually. And it was very salty. I guess that. <laughs> Spicy.